Hi, welcome to my today's class. In this class, I will discuss about reflux esophagitis, gastroesophageal reflux disease in a very simplified way. Now in a normal person, whenever a normal person takes meals or if he ingests anything, that food material, that liquid will pass down through the esophagus into stomach. Now the lower end of esophagus is known as lower esophageal sphincteric area. As such, there is no sphincter in that area, but that particular area acts like a sphincter. In that area, there is a part of cardia, there is a part of esophagus and their junction is known as gastroesophageal junction. There is an angle of stomach in that area. So this whole area acts like a sphincter. So whenever food material passes down into the stomach, it gets closed. This is a natural reflex. It closes down and food material and acid is will not pass upwards. It will not regurgitate back towards the esophagus in a normal person. In a normal person, pressure as low as 8 millimeters of mercury can push down the food material and liquid from the side of esophagus into the stomach. But when pressure in stomach is raised and it is raised suppose say up to 80 millimeters of mercury even then the food material will not leak back to the esophagus in a normal person. But when tone of this area is decreased then in that case even a small pressure when it is raised in that area in the stomach it will cause leak of the gastric contents and acid in the esophagus. This is known as reflux gastroesophageal reflux disease and this causes reflux esophagitis. Now the incidence of this gastroesophageal reflux disease is about 30 to 40 percent of normal population but it gradually increases. This particular gastroesophageal reflux disease is more commonly seen in people who are consuming more of chocolate, who are taking more of uh, alcohol, they are taking more oily food. In these cases, the tone of lower, is, uh, lower end of esophagus is decreased as a result of which there is reflux of acid towards the esophagus. In weight lifters, in this area of esophagus, there is hiatus hernia. I have already talked about hiatus hernia in my previous lectures. If there is hiatus hernia, again this will decrease the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter and there is passage of food material from stomach back into the esophagus. In, and in hypertensive patients who are consuming antihypertensives to control blood pressure, in those cases also the lower esophageal sphincter tone is decreased and chances of gastroesophageal reflux are more. In smokers, in tobacco chewers, again the tone of lower esophageal sphincter is decreased and there is leak of the gastric content and acid towards the esophagus. Now, in the cases of this gastroesophageal reflux disease, if a person has developed this gastroesophageal reflux disease, in those cases, to begin with, there is no pathological changes in the esophagus. Only patient is symptomatic. Later on, as time passes out, as more and more reflux occurs, gradually there is inflammation in the mucosa of esophagus. Esophageal mucosa becomes inflamed right from gastroesophageal junctions, junction upwards. Gradually, if it is not treated, again time passes out and treatment is not taken properly, then in those cases, patient will develop erosions and later on ulcerations. Because of this severe inflammation, because of ulcerations and erosions later on on healing, that mucosa which is normal, normal mucosa of esophagus is replaced by squamous epithelium. 
if it is replaced by squamous epithelium there are chances of stricture formation later on and sometimes even development of carcinoma on healing so these patients of gastroesophageal reflux disease and reflux esophagitis later on may develop a stricture as a complication and carcinoma as a complication so these patients should be treated as soon as possible now these patients of reflux esophagitis and gastroesophageal reflux disease they usually present with retrosternal burning sensation now this retrosternal burning sensation is more in post meal period when patient lies down after taking meals there is retrosternal burning sensation as soon patient sits up this retrosternal burning sensation will gradually disappear but later on as this disease gradually progresses that means when inflammation develops in the esophageal mucosa and it involves lower esophageal sphincter also then in those cases laxity that is tone of lower esophageal sphincter is further is decreased and as a result of which more and more gastric content and acid will reflux back into the esophagus and these patients they will con- complain of continuous burning sensation in chest later on this disease in this disease i have already told you that they may develop stricture so once they develop stricture this esophageal reflux phenomena will gradually gastroesophageal reflux phenomena will gradually disappear and it is replaced by dysphagia so if patient develops dysphagia after some times this suggests that probably he has developed a stricture even if carcinoma develops as a complication of reflux esophagitis then also patient will develop dysphagia so these patients of reflux esophagitis must be treated immediately it should be treated they should be treated immediately in order to investigate these patients the upper gi endoscopy is diagnostic with the help of upper gi endoscopy you can diagnose reflux esophagitis very easily now how to treat these patients once you have diagnosed it as a case of reflux esophagitis how to treat these patients number 1 you will advise patient to avoid excessive chocolate intake avoid smoking avoid alcohol avoid tobacco chewing avoid strenuous exercises so as to any condition that is producing laxity that is relaxation of lower esophageal sphincter such type of activity such type of food material should be avoided patient should be advised to raise the head end of the bed up so that more more and more acid goes down food content goes down it doesn't regurgitate back apart from this proton pump inhibitors with prokinetic agents is one of the treatment of this reflux esophagitis and this is very much helpful in reflux esophagitis and gastroesophageal reflux disease so this is how we treat a case of gastroesophageal reflux disease naturally a question will come to your mind that how long one should give this pharmacological treatment for this gastroesophageal reflux disease so i suggest that first of all advise patient to avoid any such type of meals any such type of food material which is decreasing laxity number 2 avoid any such condition which is increasing intra abdominal pressure such as obesity or any such condition like chronic constipation advise patient to avoid chocolate like material and ask patient to put the head end of the bed up so that food material passes down easily and if and then if patient is not responding then give him proton pump inhibitor and prokinetic agents for at least a month then gradually taper off the prokinetic agent and proton pump inhibitor i usually what i do in my treatment i give proton pump inhibitor and prokinetic agents twice a day and then after a month or so i then gradually taper it off first i decrease the dose to once a day 
early in the morning empty stomach and then gradually after a month or so again i give alternate day treatment alternate day proton pump inhibitor and prokinetic agent and then after another one month i further decrease the dose by giving a gap of two days in between and then gradually i remove of the prokinetic agent and proton pump inhibitor and most of my patients about 80% of my patients are doing well with such type of regimen thank you